Thank you, uh, and welcome to our concert tonight. Um, I've been exercising lately, uh, but still tired after that five minutes of conducting. Um, hope you appreciate that. Uh, that was uh, William Kraft's Momentum, uh, a piece uh, that uh, I've, I've really enjoyed for a long time. I played it as an undergraduate um, many, many years ago. and. Um, somehow, strangely, stuck in my ear, I guess, or made an impact on me. Um, and so I programmed it here uh, probably three or four times, and uh, this performance tonight is extra special because, uh, of course, unbeknownst to us when we uh, programmed this piece at the beginning of the semester, um, we uh, uh, would learn uh, several weeks into the semester that William Kraft uh, actually passed away. And um, so this performance, in a way, uh, is our uh, offering to sort of honor uh, him and his work and his contributions to the percussion world and uh, music world. Um, so uh, this is going to be a fun night. Uh, we have uh, six pieces total, one down, five to go. Uh, and the second half of the concert will feature exclusively uh, the works of Ivan Trevino, who's our guest composer, and if you're a percussionist, you most certainly know who Ivan is, or at least know his music. Um, we'll get to him a little bit later on, and I'll, I'll tell you more about him, but we've had a great day uh, working with him and having him spend some time with our students, and um, so that, that's that been uh, extra spe special for us, and, and in particular for all of us, of course, we're coming off of um, uh, a, a decent span of time here where we haven't had the ability to, to gather like this and we haven't had the ability necessarily to bring in uh, guests in the way that we did uh, today with Ivan. And so I'm, I'm glad we're, uh, we're approaching uh, a time when we can do that perhaps more regularly because it, it really is, uh, for me, one of the more meaningful things about what we, what we get to do. Uh, the next piece on the program is a piece called 42nd Street Rondo by uh, 
Wayne Siegel. And um, I'm, I'm freezing these guys who are about to play it. We have two freshmen coming out here. Uh, they're probably a bit nervous. I'm making them probably more nervous um, by making them sit in the wings here. But they've done a great job with it. And uh, this is, for me, also a really um, a wonderful experience to, to see young players um, sort of get a foothold uh, with a new group uh, at a new place uh, in a new city where they haven't spent a lot of time. And uh, this is the first semester that Jack and Tyler have been in the Baylor Percussion Group. And so we thought we'd feature them in this uh, duo piece, uh, fun piece for toms, bongos, cowbells, um, groovy, rhythmic, and uh, without further ado, please help me welcome them to the stage.
Okay, thanks. I'm back. Um, final piece on the first half. Uh, Peter Martin's Bend for two marimbas, four players, and a number of different uh, implements. Really, really nice piece um, with a lot of great timbres and colors. A um, little pre-planning. After that piece, we will have some logistical moves to make, uh, which should take no longer than about we'll say seven or eight minutes. So brief intermission, I wouldn't go too far. Uh, and then when we come back, we will welcome Ivan Trevino. Um, so enjoy this final piece. I do also want to say uh, at the end of our concerts, all Baylor Percussion Group concerts, we do like to invite people from the audience up on stage. If you would like to see any of the setups, instruments that we are playing, uh, please do feel free to come up here and poke your nose around a little bit. Uh, do be mindful of maybe some of the smaller uh, sticks and implements that are personally owned, uh, but anything that's big and large that you want to come look at, uh, music included, please do feel free to come up. Uh, help me welcome to the stage the Bend Quartet.
Okay, welcome back. Um, I think that was probably sub eight minutes. If anybody was clocking me. Uh, so smooth transition to second half of the show, three more pieces. Um, also want to say hello to the probable tens of people around the globe watching on the live stream. Um, but if you are one of them, thank you for, for tuning in and checking in. Um, it is a, a, a nice aspect of, of one of the things that we've taken away from this time, uh, that we do have the ability to actually share this music with more people in more ways now. So as much as we enjoy being here live for you, we also enjoy having the possibility of uh, reaching those who, who can't be here, especially families uh, of our students uh, who perhaps live farther away. Um, our guest composer, Ivan Trevino. Uh, I first met, I believe, uh, Ivan, if memory serves me correct, um, only when he came to uh, replace me for a sabbatical leave in what I believe was 2015. I think we determined that earlier today. And uh, Ivan lives down in Austin, and um, of course I knew about him from reputation, and uh, everybody said, oh, Ivan's so great, Ivan's so great. And, uh, you know, anytime we hear that about someone, uh, we think, well, they can't be that great. Um, but turns out Ivan is, and, um, and has continued to be. He, he really is one of the, um, for me, bright spots, um, certainly in the percussion world, but I think just in life as well. He's, he's, um, he exudes joy. Um, you can hear that in his music. Uh, but you can also detect that just, just from a, an initial conversation with him. So our students uh, back in that year when he took over for me for a semester had the great pleasure of studying with him for uh, a full semester. And then he stayed around for a little bit and taught here adjunct, which we, um, which we really enjoyed as well. Um, but because he lives in Austin, that was a tough commu commute. And um, uh, Happy to report that here just recently he has been, been appointed to the full-time faculty of uh, UT Austin and uh, is now serving there in that capacity, um, which uh, is really, really great for him and is really great for the UT Austin studio. So we're going to bring Ivan out with the first quartet that will play his piece, Space Junk. Ivan will be narrating for that, and he's going to say a few words about a few things before they play. Thank you so much. Um, my name's Ivan. I'm not as tall as Todd, so I'll get on my tiptoes, I guess. Um, I'm so happy to be back at Baylor. Um, I think this was really my first sort of experience uh, teaching um, at the collegiate level, and I learned so much here. I learned so much about um, what teaching means to me. I learned so much um, from Todd, from Dr. Meehan, about how to um, sort of run and organize a program and to do it in a thoughtful and meaningful way. Um, so my time here was really special and it's so nice to be back. Um, this next piece that we are going to perform for you is called Space Junk and it's based off of a children's story that um, I wrote a few years ago and um, it's so funny sort of seeing a lot of old friends here, all of us with children now, and I know Dr. Meehan and I were reminiscing and sort of talking about <laughs> raising our children and the different sort of stages that they go through. Um, but the stage that I'm in right now is reading uh, bedtime stories to my four-year-old son, Henry, and 18-month-old Oscar. And they ask me, um, or at least Henry does, to, um, tell them space junk again. They love this story, and I feel kind of weird about telling them a story that I wrote, but I think it's kind of cool to do so. And um, obviously Henry and Oscar are not here. They're in Austin, and they're asleep. So you're gonna be Henry and Oscar tonight. Um, and I'm gonna actually just tell you the story, and then we'll do it with music that I've created to accompany the story. So um, this is space junk. The stars are jumping tonight. Their smiles are big and bright and light up the sky. 
But in one corner of the sky, there is one little star who is stuck. She is not jumping or smiling or shining. She is alone by herself, away from the other stars, and she can't move. She is covered in space junk. The other stars have made a mess, and their space junk has covered up the little star, floating her far away from everyone else. But she is a smart little star. She jumps, shakes, and wiggles her way out of the space junk. And instead of leaving it to float back into space, she decides to do something else instead. She starts to make things with her space junk, like cool clothes and bright jewelry and even musical instruments. She releases her creations into the sky and watches them float towards the other stars. They try on her cool clothes and her bright jewelry and start to make beautiful music with her instruments. The other stars realize how special their space junk can be and how special their little star can be too. The little star is happy now. She floats back home, jumping and smiling and shining and singing too. Now with music. The stars are jumping tonight. Their smiles are big and bright and light up the sky. But in one corner of the sky, there's one little star who is stuck. She is not jumping or smiling or shining. She is alone by herself away from the other stars and she can't move. She is covered in space junk. The other stars have made a mess. Their space junk has covered up the little star, floating her far away from everyone else.
is a smart little star. She jumps, shakes, and wiggles her way out of the space junk. And instead of leaving it to float back into space, she decides to do something else instead. She starts to make things with her space junk. Like cool clothes and bright jewelry and even musical instruments. She releases her creations into the sky and watches them float towards the other stars. They try on her cool clothes and her bright jewelry. And start to make beautiful music with her instruments. The other stars realize how special their space junk can be and how special their little star can be too. The little star is happy now. She floats back home, jumping and smiling and shining and singing too. Thank you so much. Um, before Alejandro and Quincy play this next piece, 
I'd uh, just like to mention a couple of things. One, um, Space Junk was commissioned by a group of former Baylor students that were actually here when I was teaching here, um, called Lagan Percussion, and they helped create and fund and premiere um, that work, and that means a lot to me, and one of them is here, Ricky Bracamontes. Can you just wave at everybody? <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. Um, it's really nice that you're here. Um, I hope we did it justice. <laughs> I got the thumbs up, that's good. Um, so this next piece is um, a little um, unusual, I think. Um, and one of the reasons for that is it's actually played on guitar. And I'm not quite sure if it's a percussion piece played on guitar or a guitar piece played by two percussionists. But um, whatever it is, I think that um, something that is meaningful to me is the idea of uh, multi-instrumentalism. A lot of my favorite musicians play a lot of different instruments. If you saw the documentary Summer of Soul, you saw C.B. Wonder playing drum set in addition to keys. Dave Grohl is another person that comes to mind. Um, and that idea of being able to play a lot of different instruments was sort of normal for me. I grew up playing in my dad's um, funny, sort of strange mix of genre, gospel, Tejano, country, western band. And writing music and playing all of the different instruments was just sort of a thing that everybody did. Um, so I thought it would be great to introduce that idea to the percussion world and perhaps have percussionists who don't typically play guitar, um, sort of learn about it and learn it through the lens of the percussion stuff that we do. Um, so the piece is called Seesaw and it's notated in tablature, which is sort of a common way that guitar music um, is notated. And a, a lot of times for sort of more novice guitar players, I guess, but that notation is very accessible and this particular piece is tuned almost like a cello, so um, notating it in standard notation would be sort of difficult to decipher. So tablature actually made a lot of sense for me um, to write this next piece. So uh, without further ado, Quincy and Alejandro, uh, here's Seesaw. <laughs> 